Hi, I'm Tim Holtkamp, and it is Friday, May the 1st, and I'm going to be covering what it looks like from when you receive the email asking you to start the loan portion of the Economic Injury Disaster Loan through the time frame in which you receive the documents to fill out to actually get the loan funded. Okay, you're going to receive an email from disaster at customer service, or excuse me, disaster customer service at sba.gov. At least that's who the email has been coming from uh, to this point. But certainly it will be an sba.gov uh, address. And if you up look in the um, in the subject line, it's going to be SBA application number, and that's going to be the application number. It's going to be your unique application number. Make sure that's the same one that you receive. That way you can be certain that you're not being spammed by somebody in an attempt to get your information or that sort of thing. So double check that, and your application number is going to be all over this email. So it's right there in the subject line. It's going to say SBA application number. There's it, submitted confirmation. And then your email address. I have this one blacked out because it's not mine, it's uh, uh, another client. Mine hasn't came through yet, so, whoops. All right, and then this is what the email looks like. Basically, just create your SBA uh, injury disaster loan portal. Once again, cite your um, application number, and then has this little green box that you're to check. When you click on that box, it uh, sends you over to the website, and you're able to set up your username and password and interact with that process. Okay, now you're gonna get this section and it's gonna ask you for a few things. First, it's gonna, you're gonna click on here to verify your identity. Now, I'm just getting screenshots, so I may not have everything exactly in order, but so this is gonna just give you somewhat of an idea I had wasn't the one that went through this, so I'm going off of what was given to me. But this is going to be some personal information that's been black uh, or blued out in this case. This is the amount uh, of the loan that you've been approved for. Here's the application process and funding tabs. Um, your amount right here. Uh, you'll click on that. To click view, you're going to go through and establish your identity. You're going to be asked a series of questions like what kind of, have you ever lived in these addresses? What kind of car did you have or did you have this car? They're using things off of your credit report to verify that you are who you say you are. Uh, that way it cuts down on fraud and that sort of stuff. You may get an opportunity to edit where you want the money distributed. You may not. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, no one I know is really messed with that. They were scared to. Uh, don't really blame them. Okay, this is roughly the same screen that we saw before. It's just a little blurrier, but you can see uh, the application section is highlighted. And what is done here is the amount is you can see it's different status on this one. It's eligible. This was done before it was confirmed the amount and so you would click here then to go into the section that you would then confirm the amount and look at the particulars of the loan amount okay now when you select that this is what you're gonna see the application number here and then the amount of the loan and actually I think this is the amount of the loan and then here's this little bar and you can see 30 years the interest rate this is a nonprofit so it's at two point uh, seven five, but for for profits will be two point seven five, and here's the payment for the amount. There's a uh, hundred dollar, uh, basically third party fee. Let you know that twelve months after closing is when the first payments due, thirty year term, and then you can take this little uh, red circle, move it down and the amount will go down as, and the payment will adjust and you just select wherever it is that you want you select the amount and then you confirm that amount 
and you go back to the next screen. All right, I'm going back to this home screen here. This is probably the cleanest. Um, you can't really see it here, but there was a button that said process, and you clicked on that, and then you set the thing into processing. And then you're pretty much done. It says your application's being processed. And then that is basically it. All right, and then it's typically the next day that you will come back after they've had time to process it. Now, it could be that there's documents that will be requested somewhere during these processes, but thus far no one's been requested additional documentation. I suspect the closer you get to that two million in uh, loan amount, the, that increases the likelihood of additional documentation being requested. Now, here is basically what the a screenshot of the opening page of the loan documents. It basically has your, it's, they're all docu-signed. You do them online right there. You, for the first time, get an SBA loan number, which will be your loan number for the next 30 years with this loan. You're going to have your application number again. Make sure that that's correct and the same one. So just so that there's no confusion and then it's consistent through. Uh, and I'm going to, at a later date, because there's the, these specific numbers for this client are listed just through the entire documentation. Uh, and it's like a 16-page loan doc set and I need to redact all of that so I'm going to do that in a, its own video and cover those documents in depth plus they are you know 16 pages covering them and all the things in them uh, warrant their own uh, video so that's basically the breakdown of the process by which you go to get you from applying to the loan documents take care